It's that time. Yes, it is. Saturday Live at 5. Let's talk paranormal. Are you ready? Yep. Let's do it. Well, hello there, para-peeps, and welcome to another episode of Our Haunted Travels. I am your host, Sean Donnelly. I'm your co-host, Mary Ann Donnelly. I forget the long title. Welcome to another episode of Our Haunted Travels. Let's talk paranormal live. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Seems dark in here today. <clears throat> Seems dark? Mm-hmm. Well, hello, everybody. I hope you're having a great Saturday. That's right. It is kind of gray here. Typical gray, Northeast Ohio weather. Yeah. Yeah. So we've got some stuff going on uh, outside of the live stream that we almost, I'm like, look, look down, I'm like, oh, we go live here shortly. Better go get ready. I'm editing videos and you're working on National Honor Society stuff. And That's it was right. Like, Ooh, wow. Where did they go? Yeah. The kids' packets for applications were due this week, so... They were due on Thursday. I'm crunching stuff now. Well, I guess the day goes quick when you sleep most of it. Well, that was you. That was me. I Getting didn't. Caught a bunch I of didn't sleep. nap this time. Sorry about that. <laughs> Not really, but. All right. As we get going here, and everyone gets notified, let us know the area that you're from. You don't have to be exact. Just say I'm from this state, or I'm from this state, or I'm from this country, or. Whatever, kind of stimulate that chat there a little bit. I'll do notif notif what did, what word did I use last time? I have no Notifications idea. or something. I have no I idea. <laughs> I don't know. Are you still grading papers or are you gonna help me with the live stream here? <laughs> I was busy clicking on the wrong buttons on the computer. Oh. Okay. I was opening I didn't up screens that let's, didn't let's, need let's to Let's make happen. sure this works. There we go. All right. <clears throat> oh, my. Happy Trails Hiking says, this state in this country. This state, this country. All right. Missouri, USA. There we go. <laughs> All right. Uh, Irish whiskey's from the Northern Hemisphere. Northern Hemisphere. <laughs> That's that close. Is, that that it narrows, narrows it, it down. down a lot. It does. It does. Oh, my. I wonder if everybody else is having a lazy day today. I don't know. It is one of those lazy, lazy days. I mean, last weekend was busy, 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 and we had a long weekend. And this weekend, all right, this past week has been <clears throat> rough. And I'm like, you know, I'm going to chill out and take my time and edit next week's videos. Which, by the way, yes, you guys are not going to want to miss next week. I'll talk about that a little bit more later. But uh, next week we have our investigation videos that we did this past weekend. And they're coming out pretty cool. So we're skipping the formula. You know, how we normally have ghost stories and folklore and then something in the middle then the location video we're going to do three videos next week of the investigation that we did at the barnheisel house you said it right too i did say it right didn't so i impressed. did i get a star <laughs> <laughs> so next week we got it's it's I, I guess we'll call it investigation week okay uh three a series of three videos is going to be pretty interesting so that's what I've been working on is editing. I've been working on that for a little while. Yes, but, you uh, have. I'm on video two, halfway through video two. Okay. So. All right. All right. Here we go with the show supporters. All right. Our show, so, blah, 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 blah. Our show supporters this week are Crash Palace, 12 Night Horror, and Suzanne Least. And, of course, we can't forget our Patreon supporter, Be You, Be Unique. That's right. And how do you become a show supporter? Well, you would, of course, follow us on Twitter, like, retweet, and comment on as many of our posts as you can throughout the week. Be in the top three, and you would be a supporter for us there. And then if you want, you could also give us a $5 a month or more uh, support payment uh, 
at Patreon and become one of our Patreon supporters. There you go. There you have it. So the links to our Patreon are down below us right here, and Nightbot's dropping them out, and Nightbot's also dropping the link to our Facebook group page, which is growing like crazy. Did you know we're over 300 I did know there? that. You did know that. I did know that. I didn't know that you went in there. I go in and I peek. <laughs> she peeks. <laughs> I look at what people are posting. She peeks. I, I actually had a conversation with... Uh, um, Dave. Yeah, I saw you did. I yeah. saw you did. Yeah, got to talk to Dave the other day because he happened to be posting at the same time I was I was peeping, and so I'm like, Dave. And so we had a little chit chat. And I was thinking, wow, if you could spend all this time posting, why couldn't you post some other stuff? But I share some things there once in a while. Yeah, you do, and they blow up like crazy. People love the stuff you share, don't you? Okay, everyone in chat, don't you think Marianne needs to post more into our Facebook group? Yes or no in chat? Let's see. If our fans speak, I think you need to be more interactive. <laughs> oh my goodness! <clears throat> are you going to tell them who we are? No. No. Absolutely not. Look. Yes. Yes. See? They lie. She finds some really, really cool posts. I think you should do it at least once a week. Oh, can you do it once a week? Yeah, I do that once Can you a do week. twice a week? Maybe. Probably. Sometimes it's like two or three a day that I find. And then like so other, post times, them. other times I don't find anything. People could go back and look at yeah. it later. Are you going to tell them who we are? I already said no, I wasn't. Well, I thought I'd ask again, see if I get a different answer. <laughs> you know what they say about people who do the same thing over and over again, thinking they'll get different results. Yeah, they're insane. <laughs> You're going mad, I tell you, mad. <laughs> All right, like we said at the beginning of this, with Sean Marianne Donnelly, owners of PanicD.com and DarkShadowGhostStores.com. PanicD.com is a database of over 800 locations across the United States and territories that have reported haunted claims in that database we put the history links to their websites demographic information any paranormal claims evidence all that kind of stuff november of 2017 we started a series called our haunted travels which features over the over 200 locations that marianne and i have personally visited on our youtube channel that you guys are on right now Every week we feature a new location and we tell you that same information, the history, paranormal claims, but then we add to it our personal experiences and why we believe the locations are haunted. So if that's the kind of stuff that you're into and you want to learn more about that stuff, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, ring that little bell, and you'll know next time we put out a new video. There you go. You think I've done that a couple of times? Yep, you did a wonderful <laughs> job. See, that's why you do it. All right. Okay, you ready for roll call? Sure, why not? It's roll call. If you have not left something in chat, please do it right now. Marianne's going to shout you out. That's right. Got to right. make sure that you're in there. Roll call, roll call, roll call. Who's here? <laughs> All right, so we have... ATJH Travels, Boomer Rock, Happy Trails Hiking, Irish Whiskey Paranormal, Kathleen Loverso, Life on the Trail, Annette Reagan, Stephanie Delage, and Teresa Gregory. Well, hello everybody and welcome, welcome, welcome. Tonight's show, we're going to be talking about some love advice that George Washington gave. He actually gave it to his step-granddaughter through letters. Letters or letter? Uh, there were two letters that I two saw. Two letters. So uh, I'm going to see how your relationship sizes up to it. <laughs> I've read a little bit of it, but Marianne's going to do most of it. Um, so. Yeah, we just thought we would uh, finish out the uh, whole February love month thing and Mount Vernon thing all together and bring in a little... Love advice from George. Did you happen to get your uh, little show and tell thing? It was what, what show and tell thing? Or I did you from have Mount something? Vernon? In, no, I'll go. To, I'll go get it. Go get. You know right where it's at. I know where that is. I don't know which one of those cases the other piece is in. But I, I just want the. One. Okay. Okay. All right. So Marianne's going to be right back, and I'll. I'll oh man, she that just tore down knee. our set and oh. broke her knee. 
<laughs> Sorry, guys. Oh, man. Okay. So, let's uh, do some uh, community announcements. Um, happy Trails Hikings in the thing. Congratulations on getting monetized. PSPR, I didn't see him in here. He could be lurking. You never know. Or pop in at any time. Uh, he broke 3,000, uh, which is very cool. I did see a video earlier today from Polly Vlogger. He didn't have any power or internet. Could you imagine? I would go insane. I hate when that happens. Um, and that's as far as I got, folks. I, like I said, I've been editing videos, and I do apologize. But uh, I do plan on doing some more traveling around the community so to speak so if you have some live streams or great videos coming up or anything like that go ahead and leave them in chat and let us know and you're always welcome to join our facebook group which nightbot will drop here unless marianne has the link and we have daily link posts that you could put in there too yeah she lived how's your knee Wonderful. size of a basketball <laughs> no it's not that bad <sighs> What am I dropping a link for? Happy Trails Hiking has their 365 live challenge tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Central. And I believe ATGH Travels is live tomorrow, too. 6 o'clock on Sundays. And when I don't fall asleep, I actually attend those. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Irish Whiskey says, I would read a book printed on paper. I am such a caveman. That's if he lost power and, oh. and stuff. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We actually we actually had a time it wasn't this past summer, summer before, we lost power for four days, I think it was. Couple. Three or four days. It, it was it's horrible. been a few years longer we than that. We resorted to board games <laughs> <laughs> by candlelight. That was horrible. We had to clean out the freezer and uh yeah. Yeah, that was not fun. All right. So anyways, we'll keep the show going here. Um it's time for Mary Ann's well this isn't for me, babe, but we're gonna say it is. Mary Ann's eBay update. <laughs> All right. So she got a cool little thing. That's why I asked her to go get it to tie into Mount Vernon. That's right. That we just did. That's right. I actually have an American flag that flew on the grounds of Mount Vernon while we were there. Yeah. The day we were there. Yeah. So 7, 18 of 13, uh, according to the box, uh, this was flown over uh, Mount Vernon. So... There we, we have need it. to get that there's folded a correctly. Well, that's the way they sold it. And there's yeah. a certificate we have a COA. inside saying that that was true. So I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And um, actually, when we were there, we, we picked up a bunch of these. <laughs> we got them for our parents and everything from uh, they were Christmas flying gifts, over. Uh, it wasn't the, necessarily the date that, that ours was, but... Um, we made sure I remember we, we, we dug through and, yeah. and found the specific date that, yes. that we were there. Yeah. But they do do that. Um, they fly one a day. Uh, they fly a couple of them a day. Or actually. they fly a couple a day. Yeah, they have several flagpoles. That was 2013. How am I going to remember that? But They have several flagpoles and they change them right. a couple times a day right. so that there you're are right. multiple there available for sale every day. Yeah, yeah. so it's pretty yeah. cool. It's very, very cool. It's a nice little souvenir. It is. So. I also have a, uh, it's in one of our uh, travel cases that we take to our uh, location displays when we go out to, uh, to do. Uh, yeah, booths. Booths, yeah. Uh, I actually have a uh, flower, a rose that was grown on Mount Vernon. So I have that as well, but I didn't pull that out either. <laughs> Sorry, folks. All right, why don't you check in with chat and see what we got going on. You might have to scroll up. I might have to scroll up. You mean they're talking a lot? Oh well, I my. asked them to leave in chat if they had anything going on on their channel. Okay. All right. So uh, Kathleen says that's what they did when they lost power. Happy Trails thinks that's a cool, that's very cool. Lori Bryant says that's a cool souvenir. Uh, <laughs> board games, B-O-R-E-D. <laughs> Board it, games. It, it was a yeah, pun I get it. Okay. I get it. Board uh, games. <laughs> I get it. Uh, Stephanie says that she was just booted, but she's back. She doesn't know why she was booted. I don't know either. Uh, let's see what else we have. Ross, Russell, Rom, Russell Rama videos is here. Hello. Hello. That is a new one to me. 
so welcome. And everybody else is just saying thank you and things like that. So I am caught up. Alrighty. All right. EBA update. Fifteen done. minutes. eBay update. Yeah. Done. Check. We have the housekeeping done. Fifteen minutes. Did I forget something? I don't think I did. I don't know. Probably, yeah. but it's okay. Well, this is a presentation from a couple of weeks ago, so. Yeah, that's not going to be helpful for you. No. Yeah. <laughs> All, All right. right. So I guess that means that uh, we'll be headed off to our uh, our topic for today. But before we do, there's I'm just one thing drop that I didn't do. A couple of links in here for you. We have 14 watching. I see 14 watching. I don't know if that's so I'm in correct. I see watching too. What else you got? What do you got? I see 14 watching. We forgot to do the uh, bring in boars. Do we need to bring in boars? Do you guys want to see dancing boars? What do you think? Should we bring in dancing boars? Sure, why not? We didn't do this. We got 14 watches. Let's see if we could double up. Here we go. Sorry, I was just looking down my phone. I'm like, oh, I missed a call, but that was me looking for my phone when it was in my pocket. Yes, yes, it was. <laughs> I dialed myself. And his and pocket like, lit up. I'm like, that phone number looks familiar. He's so sad. He's like, hey, where's? do you know where my cell phone is? And I'm like, well, it was on the kitchen table at lunch. And I went and I looked and it wasn't there. He told me to look somewhere else. Then I'm I'm looking by his like laptop and stuff, and it's, I'm like it's not there. And so he called it. Sure enough, his pocket, pocket lit up. It's in my pocket. My hot pocket. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious! All right. So I saw Pusha Studios is here. Hello, I see hello, that too. hello. And they said that they loved Dancing Boris. Dancing Boris. Dancing Boris. Dancing Boris. I'm going to have to play it again. I forget what music's on there. I know. I we don't get to hear the music. sound. Yeah, we don't get to hear that, but I'll have to play You're it. You're going to have to change it up pretty soon. Make him do something different. Yeah. Yeah. You've used it for a couple weeks. Yeah. Yeah. I need. I keep saying I need to make more little Little videos. Boris videos. Mm -hmm. I'll do it. Pusha <laughs> <laughs> Studio said they went live at 10 p.m. yesterday. That is well past Mrs. Donnelly's bedtime. <laughs> I think I was asleep on the couch 10 by then. Yeah. I, no, actually, we had just gotten up. We woke up at 9.30 from our nap, and we got up we and we dinner. ate dinner. Yeah. Yeah. But I think we ate dinner and pretty much went, went back, back to, to sleep. Bed. Yeah. Yeah, it was a sleepy night. It was a rough week. We had a four-day weekend last week, which was good and and, and bad at the same time because normally like on a long weekend like that we like shut off the alarm clocks and just do whatever we want and that didn't happen yeah not having work on monday kind of threw everything off and then work has been <laughs> <laughs> yeah so it's been very tiring for me because i've have i have three major projects going on at the exact same time so i pretty much come home take a little nap and then we get up and have dinner and then i work on youtube stuff and then go to bed and that was like for four days straight so friday i was a little beat today i was i felt good having that nap today i kind of i think i'm getting caught up anyways are you ready to do this washington's dating advice yeah but, but pusha studios we missed it last night they said that they sang lullabies in four languages last night oh wow we might That's, have to go walk, yeah. go back and catch Definitely that gonna have to see that four languages not two four four languages i could see three with them i wonder what the fourth one is mm -hmm. i don't know all right so are we ready you were asking if we were ready yeah, to do dating ready? advice 
Let's All right. do some dating So set advice. this up. Go ahead and set this up. What what is this? Um, this is on actually Mount Vernon's website. Yes, correct? actually, yes. when I was doing some uh, research for uh, the videos from this past week, I went out there to get a couple of pictures of some things and uh, found this page. It, 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 Washington's dating advice. I'm like, we got to look at that. Valentine's Day was just this past week, you know. And I said this would have been great for that. And so, luckily enough, we still have this live at five still in February so uh, so he actually had given his uh, step granddaughters some advice on dating and choosing a mate and uh, you want this so you can scroll no you can do it oh you got it over there no, no I don't you okay just pull that up but uh, so this is his uh, advice that he gave to them a couple years apart because they were you know probably having some difficulties with choosing selections of mates at different times, you know. Uh, but anyhow, I thought they were kind of cutesy and thought we would take a look at them. Okay. All right, so how are we going to do this? I don't know. Well, basically the way they have it set up is they have a statement written by George Washington in one of the letters to his great-granddaughters, step-granddaughters. Remember, he didn't have any children of his own so that's why they're step granddaughters and uh, then they take and they translate it into well what did he probably really mean and then uh, saying hey so it w would your guy stand up to it or not so it's kind of how they have it set up so we'll see what what transpires we'll see which way we go okay all right so the first one is is this it is your guy normal or a nut job <laughs> yeah so George Washington said when the fire is beginning to kindle and your heart growing warm, propound these questions to it. Is he a man of good character? A man of sense? What has his walk in life been? Is he a gambler? Is he a spendthrift? Or is he a drunkard? So basically the people at Mount Vernon say, hey, this is what he really meant. He said, hey, the words of character and sense are a little old-fashioned, but character means qualities of integrity, courage, and honesty. Sense means sound and practical judgment. So think about your mates. Do they have these characteristics? I like that you said mates and not just picking on men. <laughs> you like that? <laughs> yeah, I could go either way. <laughs> So <laughs> not was... speaking from experience. <laughs> he he was of course, you know, talking to his great granddaughter, step granddaughters, and they would have been uh probably in that day and age looking for guys. Not necessarily today, but you know. You know what this kinda reminds me of? Remember uh uh Amber? Remember and I gave her like a Oh uh, yeah. Uh <laughs> I gave her a uh a checklist. No, it was like a job description of here's what the guys need to be able to do in order to go out with you type thing. Uh-huh. <laughs> I do. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. It was pretty amusing. Yeah. So anyhow, if you looked at your mate and you said, hmm, they do the right thing even when it's hurtful. They won't ditch you just to hang out with their buddies. They won't, as today, there is ghosting. Not like ghosts like we talk about, but, you know, ghosting with cell phones and things like that. You know, your social media ghosting. Uh, but anyhow, if they do those things, they don't do, you know, any of that kind of stuff, then they might be pretty good for you. But if you're having trouble putting your mate and sense into the same picture. Same mental picture. <laughs> then he's not for you. Swipe, it says swipe to the left, figuratively speaking. <laughs> Next. <laughs> I like that. Swipe to the left, figuratively speaking. You know, they could be, does he spend his time sitting around playing Fortnite? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, goodness gracious. I got to read and chat and see what's going on in here because Timey's talking about somebody laying down after a head injury. What's going on here? Uh, hmm. 
You can talk while I read. Oh, I was reading it too. Oh, <laughs> we're both reading chat at the I same just, time. I just look straight across and I see Timey says, I bent down to put on my pants and hit my head into the bed frame and my head hurts now. Well, yeah, that probably would. Okay. So that's <laughs> what that senseless. comment was all about. All right. <clears throat> uh, <laughs> well, at yeah, least we should... know Timey should stay up for a few more hours. Yeah, you don't want to go to sleep after a head in injury. No. Stay awake for a while. Yes. Marty's crew, Family Adventures, has joined us as well. And you know what? The older you get, the more of those kind of things hurt. And they hurt for longer. Oh, jeez. <laughs> that thing that I did to my knee not too long ago, yeah, that took a while. Well, last week... Or hitting a bed frame with the knee on full stride, that hurts. Yeah. That's last smart. week we had uh, two <laughs> emergency response calls at school which i had to run across the building and then i had an activity where i was putting x's underneath my kids chairs uh to you know simulate killing them off in a in an experiment we were doing and so i had to bend down and put the things under the chairs so that was three days in a row that i did those things i had like this pains on the muscles on the on the top of my leg for like five days yeah <laughs> it we're, was ridiculous we we're, we're ghost hunting and i'm at, like <laughs> yeah. we're at the investigation and i'm like hon can you run upstairs and she's like uh, uh, each step i'm like what's wrong with you uh. yeah and then then i sat down in the cell on the floor it took me a while to get down there and then getting back up was oh yeah it was, it was fun yes timey i was killing them off in a simulation of uh, a tornado going through an area and being more selective. You know, they don't hit everything all in a row. Thing It jumps around and things like that. So, yeah. Uh, Joanne Plans, hello, welcome, says, love advice. What did I pop into? You George popped into Washington's George Washington's love advice. love advice. So this is a quote from George Washington here that says, a sensible woman can never be happy with a fool you're happy with me though <laughs> but you're not. are you a sensible woman does that question oh. that Ooh. Mm. so you're considering yourself a fool then. of course i'm a fool <laughs> isn't a fool spend hours of free time working on youtube videos well isn't that now a fool? that you mention it no no i'm not no. a fool no you're not a fool. i'm you're pretty fun you're pretty level-headed. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right. Harmony's here. Hello, Harmony. How's it going? <laughs> Harmony says she's thinking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <sighs> All right. Let's do the next one. All right. So we have somebody. How do you say that? Yeah, that's the one Ross I had Mom. trouble with. Yeah, Rossum all the videos. Thanks for joining us. Hope to hope to see you soon. And we'll learn to practice your name in the meantime. Yes, we will. <laughs> okay. All right. Ashley Beauty. Happy Hello. trails. Hey, stop calling me names. Did I call her a name? I don't, I don't think know. I did. I don't know. I called her a liar earlier because she said I had good posts, and she said she was not a liar. Oh. You know, she said I had good posts on Facebook. You know, when you asked that question, I said they were liars. And she's like, no, don't call me a liar. Okay. All right. Next one. <laughs> All right. So George Back Washington to the list. then. How's that, how's that on uh, uh, Inspired John's? Back to the list. Okay. All right. He also wanted to know if your friends approve of him. That's a good tip. Yeah. So, it's th so George Washington said, is he one to whom your friends can have no reasonable objection? All right, I'm going to stop you a second. It's Razul Ruma Videos. Razul Ruma. Rama videos. Razul Rama. Rama Videos. Okay. Razul Rama Videos. I think I'm going to go now. All right. Okay. <laughs> All right, so the idea here is that uh, if you want to, uh, you know, A good date gauge, this guy, does your friends... Yes. Do they approve? Like him yeah. or her. Okay, I'm sticking up for the guys. Sorry, girls. I'm sticking up for the guys, too. You know, I've been in situations with that. Why are you going out with her? She's such a... True. It's a good little gauge. True. 
So uh, the idea is, does your girl squad like him and think he's awesome for you? And are your guy friends giving him the thumbs up? in their dude kind of way. So uh, I guess that that would also go opposite. Do, do your girlfriends give them, give him the thumbs up and does the girl uh, group agree that he's good for you too? Or she's good for you too? Depends on which way you're going. Okay. Or do they say absolutely not? Yeah, why, why are you doing this? Yeah. They cancel all the time on you because they really don't want to go out with your mate. They have a Fortnite match. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I got, I got a Fortnite. Yeah. Match so your friends and your that. friends and and the one for you should get along. That's the idea, he says. What do you guys think? Do you like what he's come up should with? Should that so be far? a gauge? Do you really care whether your friends care? I mean, I guess if your friends keep all, all pointing out that he's not good for you, maybe you should step back and and think about it. Well, why do they think I'm, that this person's not good for me? Maybe they're seeing something I'm not. Try to evaluate the situation a little bit. I know I, I do that at school all the time with the kids. You know, I look at what the kids are, who the kids are dating, and I'm like, what are you thinking? You know, <laughs> for whatever reason, all my really smart girls always tend to pick the guys that are doing the least amount of anything productive to date. And I, I just look at them like, really? Why? Well, maybe they see something you don't see. Exactly. But when they're friends, I hear their friends saying the exact so I think same the kind point, of stuff. I think the point of this list, which we didn't say in the beginning, is it's a collective list. So, like, this would be, like, one of the... Weighted one check of the check, yes. Yeah. You're doing so, the pros and cons list. Yeah. These are kind of things because that, that could be just one of the things. Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Okay. All right. His next item was uh, if he's not into you, don't waste your time. Have you sufficiently concluded that his affections are not engaged by you? So you can again use that for the for the other side too is her, are her affections not engaged by you as well but remember these are quotes from george so he these were what he was telling the girls so uh hey if they don't really find time for you and you have to do everything to try to make the relationship happen maybe they're not the one you know you might like them a lot but they it's don't not want reciprocated. you. Reciprocated. Yeah, if they don't want you. Why? Why it lead yourself to broken hearts? Term. Yeah, why yeah. lead yourself to a broken heart? What are you guys thinking? Are you agreeing? I think everybody is taking a nap. <laughs> Maybe they Nightbot just really. Came out and I know. Nightbot. Nightbot's like posting away over here, and then like uh, everybody else is kind of. Okay. Bye. I'm not saying nothing. Leave a comment. Yay. <laughs> so I need to hit the like button as well. <laughs> uh, I forget to do that all the time. Uh, let's see here. Timey had to get her husband's dinner order. Oh, oh I thought she was taking care of her head. Her head, head injury. Yeah. yeah. No. Okay. Push, she was there we dinner. Go. Here comes chat. It was hopping there for a minute, then it just I went know. Whoop. Was Georgie Porgy a cheater? Um, well, <clears throat> you know, that is the idea. Georgie Porgy was supposed to have been a cheater. And there are some rumors about that, but uh, nothing on Mount Vernon's side agreeing to it anymore. Back in the day when I was little, they kind of mentioned it, but they have ceased mentioning those types of things today so yeah uh getting apple apples getting apples ready apple acquires ready what is that do you know what that is apples apple acquires is that for i don't know is it something a i dessert? i don't know i was a thinking dessert? i was wondering if it was something i or if it was a dessert uh Teresa Gregory says, I'm really out of it. I'm just trying to shake the groggy feeling from being sick. 
<laughs> and Irish Whiskey says, I'm happily single and gonna keep it that way. Well, there you go. Georgie Porgy kissed the girls and made them cry. <laughs> Oh, you mean that, Georgie Porgy. <laughs> I thought you were meaning Georgie, Georgie, Georgie Washington. <laughs> All right. So uh, financial gain. Can he support you? If you think that uh, his fortune is sufficient to sustain you in the manner in which you've been accustomed to live, then he might be for you. Is he able to pull his weight in the relationship? If not... Uh, you might, you know, be sitting around chit-chatting. He's like in his 30s, 40s, still hasn't found that job yet, still doesn't know how to get a job, you know, and you're paying for everything. That could be a problem. That could be a sign that he is not necessarily for you. <laughs> it says, you find yourself sitting around on embarrassing conversations with his parents about how he still can't find a job. He's 35. We'll get you an Uber. <laughs> Yeah, that might be a little trigger. Yeah, I think it's kind of funny how the people from Mount Vernon have like translated what yeah, he was saying into current t today's, uh, you know, speech patterns. All right, Marty's crew trying to hear. Kids, friends are loud. We're supposed to turn and shout. Shut up! Panic Deep videos is on. I'm trying to listen to those people. <laughs> Oh. Wood Pigeon Outdoors has joined us as well, so thanks for stopping in. Nice to see you. All right. So he had some truth about marriage, too. He said marriage basically isn't going to bring you perfect happiness. So how did he say that? Hmm. Do not then, in your contemplation of the marriage state, look for perfect felicity before you consent to wed nor conceive from the fine tales the poets and lovers of old have told us of transports of mutual love that heaven has taken its abode on earth, nor do not deceive yourself in supposing that the only means by which these are to be obtained is to drink deep of the cup and revel in the ocean of love. Eh. Translation. Doesn't sound like he was too into that whole marriage thing after all. <laughs> marriage won't bring you happiness. Uh, don't expect it to. It's hard work and don't believe anything that these movie stars tell you and show off in movies and books and poetry because it is way harder and you have to work way harder at it than you would expect. What do you think? Do you agree with that? Do you think marriage is hard work? Do you think our marriage is, is hard work? I don't think that ours ours was very much of a hard work. Like at the beginning, I mean, was she said was. Well, at the beginning. What about now? <laughs> now it's like, oh my gosh! If you play one more YouTube video, no, just kidding. Uh, <laughs> but but like when we were dating, I mean, there were things we had to, you know, we dealt with, and and you know, we we worked on it. And I'm like, well, is it's is is love really supposed to be hard? Like, should it be hard, or should it just be like if it's right, it should just work? But you know. If you think about it, 50% of marriages on average end in divorce very early on. Mm -hmm. I think it's because people do th just think it's supposed to be easy. So I think George had something here when he's like, you know, it's hard work. You know, you might not like all the things I like. I might not like all the things you like, but we have to work together. You know, I like pork chops. I not so much. I once in a while will make him pork chops and make him eat them. I, on the other hand, not so much of a fan of almost everything I like. <laughs> and so I eat it once yeah. in a while. You know, there are Compromise. compromises. You work at and it. that's what marriage has to be. It's not always going to be easy. You know, you don't want to go somewhere I do. And that's a tiny example of you know, what we're going to eat. But yeah. yeah, there's other things like that. You know, yeah, but I, I think that he hit that one on the head. It's not the way I it think is if, in movies. I think if it's worth the time that you spend together, then it's worth working at to make it work. I think that's what he's saying. Mm-hmm. I agree. But it's not all... It's not all roses. Love and roses and... Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 It's, not, it's not that way. No. At least in our case. I don't know about you guys, but... Yeah. I mean, it's not that, like, I hate being around you ever or anything like that. It's, it's just... It's not all, like, 
romance like in the movies i think that's you know and in his day they didn't have the movies they had books to read and poetry to read Mm -hmm. you know so i think that's kind of what he was getting at and i think people need to understand that people give up so easily today i think there are certain situations that i i totally agree that you know maybe they weren't for you and life will be better off for for both parties if you split ways but um I think in most cases, there's a lot of people who don't try hard enough to to get past that. Oh, it's not perfect. And then just, and say, just say, yeah, I think they do it a little too much. <clears throat> what do you guys think? Opinion. What's your opinion? Pusha Studio says marriage is like a plant; it needs water, sun, and good soil. But of course, you can choose to have a cactus. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Love tips according to Pusha Studios. <laughs> so who's the cactus now? <laughs> uh, Teresa Gregory says, in relationships in general are hard. And uh, Wood Pigeon Outdoors says, um, their, sp- their uh, significant other likes healthy foods and they don't. So they have to compromise and eat a majority of healthy foods. <laughs> Marty's crew says, agreed, marriage is hard. You have to work at it. See, and, and I, I agree 100%. Is the other person, is being with the other person worth the time you put in to work at it? If it is, then mm-hmm. suck it up, buttercup, make it work. Yeah. But at the same time, both both parties have to be willing to do that too. Yes. Yes. So. All right. Then comes the next part. Back to the list. Go Back ahead. to the list. The ladies who are flirts. The ladies. There's guys that are flirts, too. That's true. There are some big flirty guys out there. But George said, it rarely happens otherwise than that a thorough paced coquette dies in celibacy as a punishment for her attempts to mislead others by encouraging looks, words, or actions given for no other purpose than to draw men on to make overtures that they may be rejected. Don't be a giant flirt or you're going to be single forever because nobody's going to want to hang out with you. Flirts are doomed to be single forever. Mm, I don't know. Because they just can't stop flirting, huh? They gonna even if they do catch somebody, they'll probably lose them. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And I think that goes for guys and girls today too. Like I, I agree that there are a lot of guys out there. Who, they they want to be the the playboy, and you know. I'll I think there are a lot of people. pretty looks. I don't to think everybody. this is. I don't think this is a. Uh, 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 gender type thing. I think it's just a personal. I think there are a lot of people who like to flirt, but they just like to flirt. They don't like to follow through. You know what I mean? There are people who are like that. And I'm just running through my head several pictures of people popping up in my head that actually do that. But then they, you know, dislike that flirting part, you know. Okay. And they are, the ones that I'm thinking about are single. (laughs) (laughs) George, I think George nailed that one. <laughs> George George did a good job, I think, on, on these, pretty much. Yeah. So then he said, all right, we're going to have some uh, some specific ways to well, catch the Well, before we right move on, one. we have some rebuttal. Rebuttal. Oof. I would say that it depends on the type of flirting. There's fl- flirting, and then there's flirting. <laughs> I, I agree, Timey. Because, you know... Sean does call me a flirt every now and again, you know, but I, sure. but I think that a lot She's of it is clickbait. being nice to people. And I think, but I, but I agree with Tommy. I think there's a difference between being nice to people and being like, so what could I do for you? You know, I think there's a HSFL difference. paranormals in, in the house. He just walked into like, what is going on? <laughs> So, anyhow, that's that's the way it goes, you know? Pusha we, Studio says that uh, the redhead on Desperate Housewives on TV show, yes, dear, you are right, with a smile on your lips while killing her husband. I definitely got to watch that show and find out who, who killed who. I, I haven't watched it, but it seems quite interesting. She was, you know, being all nicey-nice to her husband and killed him? Wow. Uh, Wood Pigeon, I don't take marriage lightly, and neither does his uh, significant other, Jill. 
so that's good. I think that if you guys have to have a very similar belief system in order to make it work. Yeah. What we are talking about are George Washington's love advice from George Washington. So this was uh, from you said two separate letters. Yes, to two, two separate of his letters to his step granddaughters. Mm -hmm. These this is advice that he gave them that we're kind of going over and comparing to see if it still relates today. And so far, we're uh, pretty on track. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. So Teresa Gregory says that her and her fiance have been together for almost seven years and there have been times when they weren't sure it was going to work, but they chose to work on it and work it out because they believed that it was working. Read what Kathy LaVersa Le said. Someone coming in will think this is a dating site, a creepy cool one. <laughs> creepy cool dating site. Creepy. <clears throat> Creepy dating sites. <laughs> oh, wait, that's not his voice. Creepy dating sites by Boris. No? Hello, my friends. There we go. We are here at the match game to match you up with your significant other. <laughs> <sighs> Contestant number one, do you like grapes? <laughs> Haunted Love will be the title. <laughs> Teresa Gregory, my fiance and I have been together almost seven years. Did you read this yeah, one? Yeah, I did that I'm one. Sorry. Yeah, it's okay. okay. For yeah. seven years, and we had the moments. Yeah, had to work at it. Mm -hmm. right. <clears throat> Pusha Studios, a ghost in my bed. <laughs> There's a whole genre. Funny of you like should. That. Funny you should mention that though, because George Washington apparently went back to his bedroom several times after his death, according to the ghost stories and folklore that Boris read this week. Yes, he did. Yeah. He haunts the bedchamber. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it may have been true all the way back to Martha because after he died, Martha said, mm -mm, I'm that not staying here anymore. That didn't make it into any of our videos last week. And that's a good point. I'm glad you mentioned that. She refused to go back into that bedroom Where after he, he passed away. She changed bedrooms. Yeah, she actually moved upstairs to the attic, the third floor, because the third floor yeah. was like a... a it was two and a half story high. So she moved upstairs to the attic instead of staying in yeah, that room. That's pretty interesting. Yeah. I think it's kind of cool. All right. Back to the list. Back to the list. All right. We so have a list to take care of. Back I to think, the list. And I think we're almost done with the list, too. So how to, find, how to find the one. Washington was stressing good character and sense, not necessarily that wiggly wobbly feeling and the butterflies in your bellies uh he said without these whatever may be the first impressions of the man they will end in disappointment for be assured an experience will convince you that there is no truth more certain than that all your our enjoyments fall short of our expectations and none does it apply with more force to the gratification of passions so they People, the fine people of Mount Vernon say that what he's saying there is uh, be cautious. You set yourself up for disappointment if you rely on others to make you happy or expect for them to somehow make you have a better self-esteem uh, self and confidence. So I think that's another good one, you know, be understanding that that's not necessarily going to be the thing that you want is for somebody to somebody else to make you yeah. happy you gotta be you gotta happy be able with to yourself. make yourself happy i think happy trails hiking nailed that this this on her past live streams last week i mean you have to be happy with yourself to in order to enjoy life with others so <clears throat> happy trails by the way says they were in the room today where daniel boone died they were there for a uh, George Washington and Daniel Boone type talk, and so that was kind of cool. I wonder if Daniel Boone haunts his bedroom where he died. Mm. HSFL Paranormal says, let me be first commander-in-chief of your heart, George Washington. <laughs> uh, Kathleen says, don't depend on others to make you happy. Timey says, love yourself. Someone else can't complete you. To compete, to complete peeps coming together, complement each, each other. 
<clears throat> so there you have it. They agree so far. All right. And then George Washington also says, retain the resolution to love with moderation, at least until you've secured your game. <laughs> so basically, before you really commit to this person, know, know who you're dealing with. Make sure they're the right one. And I think that is something that I might even turn out into a poster and stick on my wall in my classroom for my kids because they don't seem to do that. They do not wait and try to think about whether this is the person for them. They just jump into everything. Oh, yeah. If your kids are 14, 15, 16 years old and they think this is it, man, this is the love of my life. Yeah. Nothing so, else matters. Absolutely. And uh, you got to remember, you know, that person might not be the one you're going to be with for the rest of your life so do you really want to go this far with that individual mm -hmm. uh, hold back your affection until you feel that uh, you know who you're dealing with all right is that, so that it that's the end that's it those oh, are his thoughts that's the letter okay the two letters yeah Okay, what do you guys think? Do you think George Washington's words of romantic wisdom still hold today? <laughs> Kathleen says, you guys are now my new shrinks. <laughs> oh, man, can I really do some damage? <laughs> now, remember, most most of that was George Washington. We were just kind of, we you know, we were sharing embellishing George on George's thoughts. We didn't really have... We didn't really have those on our own. But we really think about the same types of things. Well, so. I agree with it. See, our opinion is, yeah, it, it, he nailed it. This was, when did he write this? Is this there a date? 1794 and 1794 he wrote this. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's still... It's still pretty valid. Yeah, I, I think it's, this guy was, you know, very intelligent man. Probably why so. he was the first president of our yeah. country. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he was the best in the land, right? So this was a letter that he sent to his step-granddaughters. Right. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some cool stuff. And that's going to, for this week at least, we might circle back around to Mount Vernon later on. Um, we covered it pretty heavy mm -hmm. with most of the stuff we have. Yep. Wood Pigeon says, Jill's dad said uh, at the wedding... A true lumberjack doesn't take the first tree he sees to tap. He taps a bunch of them to find the perfect one for him. <laughs> That's pretty cool. <clears throat> oh my. <laughs> Teresa Gregory says, pretty much know where most of the shrinks came up with the rules for relationships. Yeah, took them right from George. <laughs> An HSFL paranormal is just making new valentines. <laughs> I, I can see him making some new valentines George with that Washington on it. George Washington valentines. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, thank you, Happy Trails. Yes. Yeah, we... we we covered it pretty well. We we said a lot of stuff about Mount Vernon this yeah, week. Yeah, you did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 you did. Uh, I I'm I'm trying I'm running through my head here to see if there's something that we missed. I guess you could have talked a little bit more about the uh, archaeological digs that were taking place. Well, um, they they still are working on different things. Um, yeah, they just reopened. I, I believe they just reopened the new room. And they we really didn't cover the gardens that much either. No. But Nor there the Pioneer are a lot Village. of gardens. Just, just the same as uh, Monticello. There mm -hmm. were a lot of gardens, too, where they did a lot of testing of crops and things like that, too. So, yeah, probably in most cases, uh, we'll, we'll probably stop back there at some point. Because we'll be going back to D.C. and yeah, and it's not far from there. So absolutely. <clears throat> He's on fire. I definitely got a history lesson. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, you know, 
and I, I'm glad you say that these are uh, these uh, you say a new fresh approach to paranormal okay when we got into the paranormal back in 2010 we wanted to learn as much of about a location now see a lot of people like to go into a location cold which means they don't know much about it and they go in and try to see what they find and then they do the opposite to try to back up what they find we like to do it the opposite way we like to find out as much of the location that we can before we go into it and you'll see that in our videos next week um we tried as much as we could within a short amount of time get as much information that we could about the barnheisel house mm -hmm. so that when we go in and we do those investigations and ask those evp questions and spirit box sessions and stuff like that we kind of narrow it down to the people that either we know that passed away there or events that happened there or uh, if there was an event that there was unanswered questions, those are the kind of things that we ask. So what we present on our channel in most cases is that research history part. And, you know, sometimes we'll throw in those investigations and that kind of stuff to see if it kind of backs up, you know, mm -hmm. the, the kind of things. But that's that's what got us intrigued to it coming from like the educational background you know, the mm -hmm. history part of it. So, yeah, it is a little different on our channel. I agree with that. Mm -hmm. That's why I've changed the name to Paranormal History. Yeah. So. I, I and even in my, even in my science class, I always do the history of things, yeah. the history of the topics. Well, we know we didn't wake up one day and we just had all these things, you know, people did different research to get us to different places. Well, for us, you know, different people lived there, you know, different people added onto the house and things like that. And so if you know certain things about what went on there, you, if you're going to talk to the spirits, ask them questions about those types of things and maybe you'll get a response rather than are you here are you here with us can you knock on a wall you know if we say you know how, how many rooms did you add or or did you like apples you know if we knew that they did a lot of those types of things in in those areas yeah. i think it's helpful to you know be more it helps stimulate the conversation a little bit better but it That's also treats them and it also treats them more like people rather yes. than just entities so yeah. if they're willing to participate yeah um i think this would help them to to choose that more often mm -hmm. that's just our our approach, our approach. To it. yeah a zombified says if i were a ghost i would never talk to those type of investigators well, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. That's just a different approach to it. Um, you know, and yeah. people get a lot of results and they work their way backwards, right. the, the opposite way. And we know a lot of investigators that are actually pretty close friends with us that do that and they get great results, but it takes longer, you know, because you're working your way back and then you got to research what you got and work your way back and make, you know, not a lot of time we don't have a lot of time traveling all over the place to spend time at those locations to right. do that. So we want to, you know, like the, and it keeps popping in my head for some reason, the, the, the USS Midway, when we were down in the uh, sick bay and did the EVP session down in there, we knew what took place down there, you know? Um, so we did a little bit more research and try to get some names and things like that. So, you know, cause we don't have the time to go back we may never yeah we may never get back, get back to, to that location there. so <clears throat> yeah that's just how we do it yeah so uh wood pigeon says that one of their hobbies that they don't talk about is that they're actually part of a paranormal group very cool mm -hmm. very cool yeah and the zombified uh said that they'd go to their mom's church and haunt it <laughs> interesting interesting choice of place you know <laughs> uh said a pastor's kid's prerogative but i guess i mean I, that's an interesting choice okay yeah. uh, uh they also said it was a good call with our name change as well so. got anything else because it's six o'clock we've managed to make it yep nope I'm, I'm, uh, I was reading chat here You're or trying chat. to read chat. I wish I could wear, I gotta get 
when I go get new glasses, I'm gonna have to get like sunglasses or something so that that glare doesn't, you know, cause so I can see chat a little better. It takes me longer because I'm like, make the, let's <laughs> I put my nose up on it. I've even tried to make the text bigger. It's just, I don't know. <laughs> my eyes don't work as good. All right. Eyes are getting younger. Oh, they're getting younger. Or older. <laughs> Time to go. Yes, I think you need sustenance. Yes. Dinner. Food. 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 All right, guys, we hope you had a great time tonight. Hope you agreed with George Washington's love advice. Get cold. Oh. He's opening and closing the windows. That's one thing. Drives me nuts, you know? Love advice. Constantly opening and closing the windows. Well, I get hot. Now you're hanging on me. Get off me. Mm. Get off me. I'm hot. Mm. Get off me. <laughs> <sighs> All right. Yes, we hope you had a great time tonight. We will be back next week. That's live right. at 5. That's right. Next Saturday, 5 p.m. Eastern. Uh, next week, coming up on Panic D videos, is our Barnheisel House investigations. We have three videos coming out. And we're using our new camera. Yes, yeah, his new toy. Yeah, some of the shots are coming out quite well. Um, very excited. Can't wait for you guys to see it. All right. All right, so yep. make sure you join our uh, Facebook group, too. Um, I know the Nightbot's been dropping it. Can you drop that real quick? If you haven't joined our Facebook group, I think most of you guys are in there already. I think they are as well. <clears throat> there you have it. There you go. And, uh, yeah, have an awesome week, everybody. And uh, enjoy the rest of your weekend. And see you in March. See you in March. Wow. Yep. i got to start working on taxes. I know you do. All right, folks, till next time. Thanks for watching. And happy hunting. I guess I could have had the outro ready. You could have. Here we go. See ya. Bye. Let us know if you like this video by hitting that thumbs up. Also, if you'd like to see more videos from us in the future, support our channel by hitting that subscribe button and dinging that bell so you get notified the next time there's a video from Panic D Video. Thanks for watching. Happy hunting. <laughs>